Hello, and welcome to Monumental, where we sit down with entrepreneurs, leaders, visionaries, and big thinkers making monumental change. Here's your host, Evan Holliday. Welcome to Monumental. I'm your host, Evan Holliday, and today we have on the show with us a good friend of mine, Vikram Raya. Vikram, how you doing, man? Brother, man, I'm doing great. Evan Holiday, monumental. Man, this was a dream of mine. I'm glad I'm on this podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Guys, uh, first off, I just love Vic's energy. Uh, it's amazing. It's contagious. Um, but, but first off, I want to jump into, he's not only a rock star multifamily investor, he's also a doctor. Um, so Dr. Raya is committed to the idea of helping elevate those around him whether it's patients who want to achieve ultimate wellness or investors who want to realize their financial dreams. I love how there's that combination between the two. Uh, So in 2017, founded Vitology Institute, a health optimization clinic, and they're disrupting healthcare by reversing chronic disease with the use advanced biomarkers, technology, and personalized medicine. As a real estate investor, he's raised over 30 million dollars in private equity with a focus on strategic acquisitions, asset management, and helping physicians around the country achieve wealth and diversity in their income. Viking Capital has been involved in 13 multifamily acquisitions in Dallas, Austin, and Atlanta, and now DC. Uh, He is sought after business strategist and consultant. And with that, Vic, I mean, I know there's like 10, 20 other things that we could be adding to that list, but let's just dive right in. Why don't you give our listeners a little bit of background on who you are? That's awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, warm introduction. And I want to correct you, man. It's 40 million now. We raised 40 million. Oh, yes. I love it. (laughs) Um, And this was, uh, I'm proud of this last 10 million we raised because it was during time of COVID. So, uh, you know, people are thinking, hey, what should I do with my money? should I put under the mattress? Should I invest in the stock market? Yeah. Or is real estate the way to go? And I'm going to answer that question in a second, but back to what you're saying, you know, a little bit about me. Uh, humble beginnings. Um, you know, I was not even born in this country. I was born in India. I came here when I was two. And, you know, my dad was, um, you know, you know, the typical immigrant story, not much in the pocket, struggled, worked hard, gave us some principles and, um, you know, went down the whole medical route. And, you know, as I started going down there, I, I knew that I didn't want to just be a doctor. I wanted to transcend that limiting belief. You know, I wanted to be my own person and being a doctor was just one of the hats I wear. Right. So, um, and to cut a long story short, I ended up going into cardiology. I had seven people in my family, uh, Evan, who died of heart attacks. Wow. So it was super important that I figure out what the heck is going on and how can I help and how can I support people in this uh, arena? And once I learned cardiology and medicine, I was like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm good. Um, My life is set. Right. But then I was reading rich dad, poor dad. I'm reading, you know, Grant Cardone. I'm reading 10 X rules. And I'm like, I'm reading about Peter Thiel. And he's saying, you know, he's a founder of uh, one of the eBay and he's like, Hey, turn your six, uh, 10, year goals into six month goals. I was like, what? And this is blowing my mind. And obviously the grandfather of motivation, personal motivation of, of, of self-development of, of transformation, Tony Robbins himself started, you know, imbibing into my head, permeating into my brain cells. And I was like, you cannot just be like this. You need to keep leveling up. You need to become boom, monumental, right? How do I become monumental? Yes. I need to, uh, first, identify limiting beliefs, understanding where my current sphere of influence is, figuring out my clarity in life, because clarity is power, as you know, Evan. And so once I understood all these things, I knew there's a better path for me, a, a greater path. And so I, I, I knew that uh, cardiology was good, but I needed to, to supplement that. I need to figure out what, what's my side gig. And so then I started doing options trading. And I did that. I was like, all right, I'm all in. Let's do this. And then I even got a coach. <laughs> And I got my butt handed to me, Evan. Wow. I literally, this, I was in cardiology fellowship and I was like spending half the day doing cardiology and the other half the day doing options trading. 
And it was like, okay, one of them's got to give. And my wife's like, what are you, are you crazy? You need to focus. I'm like, all right, okay, fine. I focused. So I actually ended up becoming the chief cardiology fellow and I, I exploded in cardiology. I'm like, all right, awesome. I'm all in. And we ended up moving, my wife and I, she's a physician as well. We ended up moving back to DC. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to start my career. And um, I joined my cardiology group and things were great, but I still had this itch of what I need to do as well as cardiology. And and that's where real estate came in. And, you know, many of your listeners who are into real estate, this, this is journey, you know, whether it's through bigger pockets or, you know, some eBooks or obviously Robert Kiyosaki is always a great one or, yeah. you know, builders or whatever, all these side um, uh, places where they teach you about real estate. So I started learning about real estate. And then, you know, my dad and I, we started our single family home business called Dare Investments. And that was in Atlanta in 2012. So we're coming out of the recession. There's some great deals to be had. And so we started gobbling up single family homes. My, my wife's told me a rule. You're not allowed to use your own, your own money because we've worked hard for this money and I don't want you to risk it. She thinks real estate is risky. And as we know, it's not the real estate that's risky. It's the investor, right? And it's because they don't have education. And hence, I started learning. And I went to real estate investment clubs. I started reading books, audio books, podcasts. And what happened was I felt more comfortable with this whole fix and flip idea. And so... And my father and I, I, I didn't want to invest in DC because the price were too high. So we chose Atlanta and we started buying single family homes. So, so uh, we ended up building a portfolio of 30 homes in two years. And we're like, wow, wow, this is awesome. And so we ended up selling those for profit. But then I'm like, you know me, I'm like, what's the next level? Yeah. It was multifamily, uh, Evan. And so we're like, all right, cool. I heard this guy named Dave Lindahl. He came and he just flew into my uh, real estate investment association and he spoke about how instead of managing one property, you can manage 20 properties with the same amount of time, you know, or or 100 units. And I was like, wow. And he goes, the bank will give you the money to buy it. You don't have to bring the money yourself. And then I go, then there's this thing called syndication. And I'm like, what is that? It sounds like, it sounds criminal, like a criminal syndicate. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so we learned that you can actually raise capital from people you know, and you pull the money together and buy large properties, and you get a professional property management company to do this. And so I, I met up with this guy, this cat, this crazy cat named Ravi Gupta, who I think was on your podcast earlier, good friend of mine, another badass, and a person who really understood real estate as well. And he happened to be a physician, so we had the same vibe. And... Uh, we started Viking Capital in 2015 and we start off, you know, JVing and doing some small projects, but now we're at almost uh, 2,600 units. We have $300 million of um, real estate uh, that we control and we've raised about 40 million as we mentioned. And so now I'm like, all right, cool. What's next? Yeah. And I'm like, cardiology is good, but I'm not really impacting people's lives to the way I really want to. I'm tired of just prescribing medications. I want to actually grab in there, Evan, and take your medications and throw them in the trash. And I actually have a jar in my new clinic called the Vitology Institute, where literally every month uh, patients come and they dump their medications into my jar. And I call it the medicine morgue. Wow. They don't need medications anymore. So That's powerful. So I started learning functional medicine, which is um, next gen medicine, where like instead of figuring out how to manage your symptoms. We're taking care of the root cause of disease. And, and now we're reversing all those things. And then I use technology and, and coaching and medicine and, you know, this multi-tiered approach to really take people to that next level. So that's sort of where I'm right now, Evan. That's amazing, man. Um, well, first off, I, I applaud you for, it just seems like every step of the way, you're just pushing the needle. And, and it seems like even, even before you got onto the Tony Robbins and the and the self-help and, and that world and that really like 10x or 100x your growth, um, it seemed like you were still just constantly pushing the needle, seeing where you could improve, how you could be the best version of Vikram Raya. Um, so first off, I applaud you for that. And second off, uh, it's amazing to hear that growth. I mean, you know, even just getting into real estate, doing 30 homes in two years, that's that's pretty dang impressive. And then catapulting there from right into multifamily investing. Uh, what, what do you think has been the biggest driver for you to, to keep growing and keep up leveling and keep being the best version of you? Uh, yeah, I, I would say there's one word, Evan, and that one word is vision, right? Uh, 
people have goals, but I think goals are pretty weak. Um, if the listeners out there, we all write down our goals, we have our vision boards, but you know, do you really believe it's possible? And I don't want you to think about the how. I want you to think about what is that vision? And how committed are you to getting that right? Um, there's a book, I don't see if I, if I have in front of me, but there's a book, uh, there's two books I recommend for every single person on this podcast right now. That is The Miracle Morning by our good friend Hal Elrod. And um, the second book he wrote was The Miracle Equation. And most of you guys out there, I know you guys have morning routines. If you're listening to Monumental, and if you're working with Evan Holiday, you're already one level up than the general public. You're probably in the top 10%, but I don't think that's good enough. I want you to be in the top three to 1%. How do you get there? It's having these morning rituals that are sort of ingrained. And I'm not talking about like you get up a little early, you do a little workout, and then you go off to your day. I'm talking about these strategic principles that you implement consistently, not for a couple of weeks, not for a couple of months. I'm talking about years to decades. And that compound of growth can help you get to that vision I just mentioned. So, so once I had that vision, I had to figure out the architecture. And I also had to have the mental armor, Evan, to get there. And so, you know, I had to forge this version of myself. Um, this version of myself never existed. There's that, there's the scared version of me. There's like, oh my God, can I get into medical school? Or my God, real estate's really stressful. I, yeah. Who will it mess with what I'm trying to do? Or like, hey, it's COVID uh, and I have a multifamily project. Uh, should I just, uh, just give up my earnest money and walk away from the deal? I don't think I can raise the capital. I mean, who's going to invest now? I mean, this is COVID, right? But it's like, no, that's, that's a BS belief. That's a limiting belief. Let's, 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 let's put that to the side and say, okay, if I could raise it, how would I, you know? And so going back to this, so the miracle morning, as I mentioned, guys, is it's about five to seven principles that you implement. It's like a routine. And he just took the best of the best. And I, already, I always had a morning routine. Um, I knew getting up early was key. I was never a morning person, but I've become a morning person. And I thrive in that. I think many of your, you guys out there are probably like that too, but it's having a little more structure in your morning. Like, okay, silence, meditation, affirmations, right? Uh, visualization, um, exercise, reading, supplements, smoothies, um, you know, all of that's important. And then biohacking, right? All of that kind of stuff. And then it's, hey, what's an affirmation is really like, okay, what's your belief? What's your goal? What's your vision? And you have to have unwavering faith plus extraordinary effort to achieve those results. And I'll say it again. It's unwavering faith plus extraordinary effort will equal those miracle results that you're looking for, that vision, that that how you want to transcend where you are and to where you want to go. And you need two more, two other things. You need accountability and coaching and mentoring. I think yeah. <laughs> my wife is like, we could have had another home, like Hawaii amount of money you threw into like coaching and mentoring advice <laughs> and books and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, but like, that's going to allow us to buy the home in Hawaii that you want, you know, like. Exactly. So, you know, I, I would say those are, those are the key things. Yeah. I, I love that. That's very powerful. And starting with that vision and that belief first in yourself is really what it all comes down to. If you don't believe then nobody else is going to believe it. And I think that's what it comes down to. And then you're right. Putting in consistent momentum building work on yourself, on your person, on your vision. And that's, what's going to get you to that point of saying, Oh, now we're, we're really achieving the things we're, we're going to the places we are into the places where we want to be. Um, and then that's when you take it up another notch and you say, all right, well, where can we 10 X again? Where can we go this time? Now that we've achieved this thing, now that this is comfortable, now that raising money during COVID-19, now that this is comfortable, we know we can do it. What's next. Absolutely. And so when you go to your limits, your limits expand, right? So you got to keep going to your limits. And it's not about not being grateful or appreciative. Uh, Evan, I would say it's this, like, you know, um, don't worry about the actual results. It's almost like you got to be um, sort of disc, uh, not disconnected. I would say it's more like not emotionally attached to your results. You're, you're, you're emotionally attached to the journey and the drive and the push. And the results should come, but they may not come on your time. And so the two things I've learned, um, as you can tell, I'm pretty go, go, go. And I'm really <laughs> energetic and I'm really, you know, push, but I've learned to quiet down. 
That was a long pause. <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Slow down. I've learned to quiet down. I've learned to meditate. And I've been meditating since 2015. Fundamental game changer, completely different practice. And I miss it if I don't do it. And a couple of different apps out there. I know everyone knows Headspace or Calm, but I really want you to uh, emphasize something called Insight Timer, I-N-S-I-G-H-T Timer. And I like that one because it actually tracks your meditations and it sort of gamifies it and it's really fun. And there's a lot of, it's a free app, so it's really good out there. So definitely want to do that. Um, and, then, and then I really believe in like, obviously short-term challenges. And you know, uh, you know, Evan and I, we're part of a, a pretty elite mastermind. And I just issued a challenge to the mastermind the other day. It's a 30-day challenge. And so you're like, okay, what is that? That's, what is that like working out for 30 days? Um, it's more than that, guys. It's figure out what's going on in your life. And I would say it's called the wheel of life, right? So think about it this way you draw a circle, right? You draw a circle of your life and you put into, let's say what, six, maybe seven categories. And, and Evan, help me out here. We'll make this interactive. What are the, what would you say are the sort of the top six categories a person should focus on in their life? Hmm. Uh, health and wellness. Okay. We got health and wellness. What uh, else? Relationships. Obviously. Yeah. Relationship. That's huge. Your career and business. You know, any kind of relationships. Yeah. Business, career. Yeah. Uh, I would say impact. Impact, charity, spirituality. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's another one. The separate one is spirituality. and. Okay. We'll make that a separate one. Spirit and then impact and charity is one. Okay, good. And maybe like passion, friends. Yeah. And Okay, cool. So you got all these categories, right? You can see this here. It's, it's, it's like sort of like a pie chart. It's like a, uh, what's it called? A trivial pursuit little pie chart, uh, Parcheesi wheel. And what you have to do is you grade yourself. And if, if you assume the outer, the outer part here, like if, if I wanted a 10 in a category, I'd go all the way out here to the 10, right? So when you did this and you grade yourself in all aspects of your life, find the one that you suck at. Find the one that you're horrible at, that you're not good enough at. And what that would be is at least level five or less and construct what I would call an intelligent 30 day sort of challenge. And you need an accountability card. You need someone who is going to call you out. And I know, uh, Evan, you probably have, do you have a Facebook group, Evan, or you have a, a monumental group that you got that people can post on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's a challenge guys. 30 day challenge. Do, do your, uh, wheel of life. And I have to give, credit where credit's due. I learned this from my boy, Tony Robbins. Okay. <laughs> you got it. You, you, you choose, uh, you know, fill out your wheel of life. And if you feel comfortable sharing it, post it on there, that'd be great. But if not, just talk about the category you suck at and then construct a 30 day challenge. So, uh, for mine, um, you know, I was like, I want to, you know, uh, I was getting up at 4:45, and I wanted to push the limit. I was like, can I get up at 4.30 every morning? And so I had to text a group of my close friends every morning at 4.30. And I even add, leveled it up. I put even an inspirational quote on it. So, <laughs> and they would call, call me out if I didn't do it. And so figure out what it is. Use a monumental group or use your own group of friends. But say, declare it publicly and figure out what it is. What if for, I have a friend of mine who wants to do relationships. And so he's, he's consistently doing something powerful every day for his relationship. So, so that, that, would, that would improve. I've had friends who were talking about they don't work out consistently. So now they have a 30 day workout challenge. And so yeah. do that consistently, guys, you are going to make tremendous progress in all categories of your life, but choose one at a time and take that challenge. Yeah. And, and to that note, I have my, I've printed it off. It's basically a calendar, a 30 day calendar. And what I've done is basically every day that I'm working and I knock off one day of my challenge, I just put a big X on it. And it's crazy. It's kind of like the insight tracker that you mentioned It it kind of gamifies it for me. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Now I, I see the momentum and I'm like, well, I can't break the chain. You know, it, it's, it's so, it's so um, easy to do. And it's so like, it's such a simple way to track it, but it's, it's powerful for your mind. I think that's part of it too, is you're also building that accountability with yourself and you're like, Hey man, you know, I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss my, um, momentum that I've built up. Absolutely. And that reminds me of a story, Evan. Um, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, who's one of my favorite comedians of all time. Um, you know, he, by the way, he's a big meditator. He's been meditating for almost I think, 20, 30 years. But uh, what he said was like, look, 
I write jokes consistently every day. I'm, he's like, you're like, dude, that's, that's pretty hard. How do you, how do you do that every day? And he's like, well, what I do is I, I make a chart just like Evan did. And I put an X and you know, as soon as you start seeing these chains of X's and now my motivation is not to write the joke or even to try to improve myself. It's like, I don't want to break the chain. <laughs> so yeah. It's like a goal. It's a game of game. I want to keep that chain going. And so guys, um, you know, Robin Sherman says it doesn't take 21 days to form a habit. It doesn't take 30 days. It doesn't even take 60 days. It takes about 60 to 70 days. Uh, actually, uh, based on the city of college of London study. So, you got to do something consistent enough to where it becomes part of your DNA. And what do I mean by that, guys? Well, well think about this. If, if a habit is like an app you're downloading on a phone, during the downloading process, it may be deleted, it may not be deleted. But once it's completely downloaded on your phone, on your DNA, on your mainframe of your brain, you own it. And that's what I'm asking you to do. And guess what? Once it's on your, uh, on, on your app, on your phone, you don't have to worry about downloading it again. It's already there. Now you can work on downloading another app right? And that's how you form an ideal life. You download the real estate app. You download the self-development app. You download, hey, perfect relationship app. Hey, I want to spend more time with my kids. But I don't have time. BS. I'm calling you guys out. You have time to spend time with your kids. I have two. I have a nine and a seven-year-old. <laughs> you wrestle in the evenings. And it's not about the qua uh, qua quantity. It's quality. Look, I'm like you guys. We work hard. I get up early. I, I lost my tail, but What's the point if I come to the end of my years and my kids don't know me? What's the point if my wife raised my kids and I never even touched them, right? Will they even know me as a father? That, that's considered ultimate failure, right? You know, success without fulfillment is ultimate failure. You need to have all these categories of life. You need to win everywhere. I, I believe in and, uh, Evan. I don't believe in or. I want to be a great dad and I want to be uh, one of the top functional medicine, health optimization uh, doctors in the world. And I want to be one of the best multifamily syndicators in the world. And I want to donate to all the charities you're doing and the charities I'm doing. And I want to have a six pack if it's possible. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you know, I do, I do, we do these Spartan races. We do all these things. Uh, so, so that's what I believe in. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. I, I love that. And I, and to stack on that, I think it's, and, you lead a, a killer mastermind group that we're both a part of, like you mentioned, and you're impacting others across the country and helping them invest in deals. And you're, you're enabling and encouraging and educating others and how to build that life and how to invest and create their own multifamily or, or business system that's going to create their long-term generational wealth. Absolutely, Evan. So, uh, again, uh, what you're doing with this podcast and with your tribe is absolutely amazing. Uh, this, this, you're cultivating people's mindsets. You're, you're giving them new, fresh voices from all over the country and probably all over the world soon as, you, you're, as Monumental becomes international. And, um, you know, obviously with all your real estate investing and you've, you've become very unique with your um, asset class. And I think you're starting to teach others how to do that too. So, I, I really applaud you. You've been a hero of mine for a while. And um, I think that you can keep uh, growing all of this, guys. And then, again, uh, as one of our mentors says, the better it gets, the better it gets, guys. I love it. And thank you for that. Um, as far as I, I did want to dive into uh, functional medicine and, and what that means to you and why that's important to you. Yeah. Um, so... For me, guys, I think traditional medicine is good for crisis care. And right now with COVID going on, thank God for all those doctors who are on the front line. Um, you know, my wife on the front line, she's in the hospital. She's seeing those kind of patients. My brother-in-law, he's a pulmonary care, care doc. Rohit Goyal, I'll give a shout out to him. He's on the front line. But, uh, you know, I, I applaud those guys because they when, when things hit the fan and you need crisis care, thank God for that. You know, I, I, I was playing basketball in 2010. I tore my ACL. I'm glad I went to an orthopedic surgeon and he actually was in, I was in Milwaukee and it was the Milwaukee Bucks doctor and he ended up, you know, fixing me. And, and that was great. But for most of you guys out there, if you have aches and pains, um, you know, metabolic syndrome, resistance, belly fat, uh, you know, hormone problems, low energy fatigue, gut issues, you're starting to be threatened to be on a pill. That's all lifestyle. And I'm going to call you guys all out. It's all lifestyle, but the good thing is, guess what? If your body was able to develop this dis-ease, dis 
this imbalance, then you, your body also has an ability to recover re, re, recharge and, um, and, and, and then elevate beyond disease to optimal health and vitality. So when you go to a doc, you know, he checks some labs, he checks some things. Normally they, he gives you a thumbs up and a smiley face, right? But you don't necessarily, you, you're probably not necessarily optimized or vital, but you're, you're probably not, you know, you, you may still have issues. And what happens is when we do functional testing, Evan, we go a little deeper. A lot of our testing, we pick up a lot of the things other doctors have missed. And we go about seven to nine levels deeper. And even in kids, even in people who are 20 years old, we pick up things that other doctors have missed. And then what we do is we come up with a game plan to not only stabilize and uh, recover the foundation, but then we go a little deeper and we talk, hey, look, our goal is not for you to be okay or average. I want you to be vital. I want you to reverse your aging. I want to... Um, you know, increase the length of your telomeres. I want uh, you to be able to have a peak VO2 capacity of an athlete and, and be able to perform at that level. So if you're a dad, if you're a granddad or whatever, I want you to be able to keep up with your kids. Or, you know, if you have a sport or passion, I saw you doing some kind of water skiing or something out there, man. <laughs> if you want to do that level of activity, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in my forties and I feel more healthy and more energetic and more powerful than when I was in my thirties. And so if you want that level of vitality, you got to go beyond just traditional medicine, right? Yeah. And that's what we do in our clinic. I love that. And I resonate so much with that. I feel like that's is something that a lot of people lose track of and lose sight of is the fact that, you know, if we actually take care of our bodies and be proactive and, you know, pay attention to our bodies as a living, breathing machine and not just, you know, taking any pill that'll, you know, surface level will fix the problem then if we really dig deep onto the core issue like like a lot of things I've, i'm learning now is like related back to our gut or what we're eating or the amount of activity physical activity we're getting like that's really the root cause of a lot of things as far as um, a lot of health issues that people are going through i mean you know better than i do but it's just reading about this and learning about this i'm like whoa like it's it's a game changer if you really like commit to and dedicate time to learning about and being intentional about your health. Um, it just has this ripple effect too on, on your, your time, your energy, your focus, your, your length of, you know, how long you get to live in this one life. Um, it just has this profound effect. So I think all of us should be taking more time and energy and being intentional about learning about our bodies. Yep. And I want to give all your invest, uh, all your uh, listeners a free gift. I have a set free seven day detox app that they can download for free. And it actually walks nice. them through a, a, a sort of an optimization. And, and just to give you guys an idea, I believe in uh, these, these pillars. I believe in the more, more advanced testing. I believe in detox nutrition, um, you know, uh, 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 fitness, hormones, inflammation, and immune boosting. And if you take care of, if you do all these things, you will live a phenomenal life. You will become a centurion, what I call people who live beyond a, a century, right? That, that's what I expect out of the monumental listeners. And so I, yes. uh, I'll send a link to you later and um, you know, all your listeners can download that for free and take advantage of that. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. I love that. Um, yeah, I, I, that's one thing actually, just for me personally, I'm like, man, I would love to find a doctor like that. I've had trouble finding a doctor like that. Um, so, so Vic, can you just like, can you be my doctor over <laughs> zoom? Yeah, man, why not? And, uh, you know, with this, I think more and more people are cool with, uh, sort of virtual health now, um, uh, with, with COVID. So yeah, uh, for sure. I, I think, I think medicine is going to dramatically change. You no, know, that it's one of the few industries that hasn't been disrupted yet. I really believe in, you know, if you guys ever read Peter Demandis, Peter Demandis is a futurist. He's a exponential thinker. He is uh, a person who's a chronic disruptor. He's come up with the X Prize, if you guys know that. And uh, he has two really good books, Bold and An Abundance. So I highly recommend reading those guys, Bold and Abundance. And, you know, uh, what, what he was really saying is, um, you know, there's all these industries that have been disrupted. Like, for example, taxi driving. Who disrupted that? Well, Uber and Lyft, right? Uh, you know, even like delivery, like all these uh, changes. Yeah. You name an industry, it's been disrupted, like space travel, SpaceX, right? A car is like Tesla. So medicine is right for this. And I think COVID has just scooted us along, you know? Yeah, so exactly. What's gonna happen. And our goal is for Vitality Institute and our clinic to be one of the leaders in that. 
So, and that raises something I, I wanted to ask you is you're, you're crushing it with Vitology, you're, you're crushing it with Viking um, Capital. How are you able to, to do multiple businesses and keep everything moving forward and, and, and crushing it on all levels? Uh, yeah, so, so uh, you, you use the word crushing, Evan, and sometimes I feel sometimes it can crush me, right? So, <laughs> so, uh, so one is uh, I have to give credit to where credit is due. Um, you've got to find uh, a partner in life that has your back completely. Yeah. And uh, when, I, when, I, when I was looking forward to marrying you know, the woman of my dreams, um, uh, I knew there were certain characteristics that person would have to have. And uh, it was, I was a little bit more conscious of effort. I mean, and so when I, I came across you know, Mona and she, you know, she just understood me. She understood me implicitly. She sort of knew where I wanted to go. And the fact that she's able to be by my side and, and help me in everything I do, it's, it's, it's a blessing. I don't think I can do it without her. And number two is um, having a group of coaches and mentors that, you know, the best of us on, on you know, there'll be days where we're like questioning, is it worth it? Do I still want to move forward? Um, maybe I should back off. Maybe I want to let go of the accelerator, you know, or maybe I've taken on more than I can chew. And it's having these wise counsel, you know, and they may not have to be real mentors. They can be books even, right? Like we've all read Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, right? Grant Cardone, 10X Rule, you know, um, you know, uh, The One Thing, you know, uh, by uh, uh, Keller. All these books, you know, that I, I find, I, I, I go back to them sometimes. Some of them I read once and I'm done, right? I move on. Yeah. But there's books are my favorites. I go back yeah. to them over and, over and I, I pick up these pearls and I'm like, you know, what were their struggles? And it, can I, can I share an exercise with your, your, uh, your listeners, Evan? Let's do it. Okay. You, I want you guys to do me a favor. Um, tomorrow morning when you wake up, create sort of a council, I don't know, let's say a council of five or council of 10, council of 11, choose a number, maybe up to at least seven people, I think, and create like sort of a, uh, the, these are your like a virtual council and, and you can choose different people from different walks of life. And, you know, you can have like Gandhi and mother Teresa and, and, and Elon Musk and Steve jobs or whoever you want, but create a council and they all have different characteristics, characteristics. And then, uh, part of your visualization should be that when you wake up in the morning, think about what's going on in your life. And then think about these people sitting around the table with you or sort of your nights of the round table. And they're all giving you advice. They're all talking to you. And they're all suggesting different things. And if you use this invisible guidance, this invisible counsel, oh my God, you'll see miracles in, let's say, 30 days. Uh, so these are some of the tricks I do to sort of get like this sort of like virtual counseling from people who I look up to, you know. And I have Michael Jordan, LeBron James on there. I have like, you know, Robin Sherman, Tony Robbins. I have Tre Trevor McGregor. I have all these guys on there in a little virtual council. And I'm, I'm thinking, what would they do? How would they approach this? Or you know, am I thinking about it differently? And I, and I also take on their different personalities and see, hey, uh, you know, how Jeff Bezos uh, takes on something is completely different than how Tony Robbins takes on something, right? And so you want to get all these things. And in a way, it's you're really looking into your own inner guidance, but you're manifesting it from all your mentors. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I, I, we actually have a, like a board of directors as well. It's like, you know, it has, um, you know, Grant Cardone, it has, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, it has Oprah Winfrey, it has my mom, it has, you know, all these people that I look up to and people that I want to get advice from. And you're right. You know, it's, it's more or less you just having a conversation kind of with yourself, but you're saying, Hey, what would they say? How would they interpret this? How would they take action on this? Um, and then usually, especially when I'm uncertain or if like times of like self-doubt, um, which we all can go through at times, I think when you look at that, that role model and you're like, you know, Hey, pick yourself up. Like they would, they would conquer this. They would face this head on. They wouldn't, you know, cower in the corner. They wouldn't, they wouldn't move away from their problems. They'd face it head on. They'd, they'd dive into it and, and solve the problem and not, not avoid it. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Great chair. Um, so as far as, so Viking capital, you guys just raised for, uh, the Washington DC deal with COVID-19, what, what is next and where do you all see opportunity? 
So yeah, great question, Evan. So uh, you know, with Viking Capital, that's our multifamily investment arm. Uh, we've been you know doing projects. You know, we started in Atlanta. Atlanta is a great market. It's an emerging market, and it really did very well from 2015 till even just recently. And and, and it's still poised to do very well. Our properties down there are still performing, and uh, the uh, uh, tenants are paying. And um, you know, I think there's gonna be a lot of opportunity. But we're gonna probably wait till Q. Q2 or Q3 of 2021 to start looking really aggressively again for deals, unless there's these one-offs that come, come across our plate. Uh, we have invested in Dallas and Austin, and those are also very strong markets and our properties, again, are doing quite well there. And then DC is, is one of the, the you know, uh, Moody's Analytics did a research study and guys, they analyzed 60 metros all across the country. So if you're looking just for, in general, real estate markets to think about, let me share with you three. So number one is, uh, San Jose, California. They said that because of Silicon Valley and all these other things, it's poised to do very well. And since most of the jobs are remote anyway, it's not a big deal. Number two is Durham, North Carolina. I'm not sure exactly the reasoning for that one. Probably the Research Triangle Park has something to do with it. And yeah. Biotech and maybe prices didn't go as crazy as before. But And the third one is obviously one of my favorites, Washington, D.C., DC is one of the most diversified economies out there. It's such, uh, it's government heavy in the sense that there's about 700,000 jobs if you take into account DC, Virginia, and, and Maryland. Wow, I didn't realize that. There's like, a, I don't know, 50 or probably 30 to 50 uh, Fortune 500 companies that are based out of there. Um, and then who can forget who, who won Amazon HQ2 sweepstakes, right? Oh, yeah. DC, Northern Virginia. So they haven't even, even started all their jobs yet, but they're expecting. You know, uh, uh, I, I believe it's it's like uh, 25,000 uh, high paying uh, uh, jobs that are going to be there. And then you've heard of the multiplier effect. Basically, for every one job, five jobs are created. So we expect to close to 125,000 uh, uh, 125, jobs will be as a result of, of the Amazon, you know, for sure. And then just the other downstream effects. So we feel very bullish overall about DC, but the deal has to be right. And the one we found is it seems to fit all that criteria. So I would say be careful, invest still, but just be cautious moving forward in the COVID times. You'd want to uh, factor in the fact that if you're doing, for example, multifamily, the reserves the banks are going to ask you about are going to be a little bit increased. Yeah. Um, the time that you want to have a financing contingency because banks are a little bit wonky about their loans and debts, uh, giving you loans right now. Your LTV will be a little increased instead of about about 25% uh, to, or 75% LTV. You may go up to you know 80. I'm sorry, 75. You may be uh, 60 or even 65% LTV. And then um, you want to have a little more reserves because just in case people don't pay rents, and so you just want to have some uh, uh, flexibility. And you want to negotiate very hard with these uh, sellers because if they're going to sell right now and they need to sell, there's probably a reason. Yeah. And I think we we talked about it in our mastermind. I think there's going to be for the next six to 12 months, there's going to be a lot of disruption uh, in, in the economy in general, but specifically within multifamily investing. Um, and there's going to be a lot of need for both multifamily investing and the workforce affordable component. Um, but really just there's going to be a wave of additional renters come across because there's going to be more families just like in 08 and 09 there's going to be more families that will not be able to afford a payment or you know lending's going to get um to a point where they they can't make it work um so i think we're going to have this additional you know at least three to five year wave of way more renters than people had anticipated oh, yeah and i think evan you're in the right um sector because people want quality low-income housing, you know, and affordable housing and work, workforce housing. All these three sectors will, will thrive. And so, you know, we, we really are mainly workforce housing, you know, B-class deals and, you know, yeah. occasionally a little bit of A's. And actually A's are the most uh, stable right now across the country because those tenants are less affected by the day-to-day -day variations. But uh, in general, um, I find the most uh, profit and the most uh, stability is in the B-class deals where value adds, so you can really, you know, you, you, already, you can take advantage of the appreciation, but you have less of the tenant headaches as a C-class deal. Yeah, I love it. Um, well, tell me a, a little bit about MD Income and, and the coaching that you all are doing on the real estate side and on the, the personal development side. Yes, um, thanks, thanks for uh, sharing that with our, your, your listeners. Uh, so you know, it, it was not really uh, our intention to have any kind of coaching or any kind of a program like this, but uh, 
you know, uh, uh, you know, I speak to a lot of different demographics, but you know, physicians or professionals out there really are looking for someone who's been in their shoes, someone who's, you know, who understands what it look, looks like to work a full-time job and try to do something on the side, whether that's real estate or other, some kind of entrepreneurship. And also look how to live life on your terms. Like, yeah, you can be a doctor and work for a big corporation. You can be a doctor and have a, uh, a solo practice and, and still take insurance and all that. But is there a way where you can work minimal amount of time, have the maximum amount of impact and practice the way you want? And, and I was able to bless enough to discover that, right? Or is there a way to have real estate, but I don't have to do all of the work and, and learn how to grow active income, passive income and, and scale and have legacy wealth, right? And so if you're looking for those kind of things, you know, we'd love to help you. We've created um, a quick uh, little uh, site, mdincome.com, where you can just go and uh, sign on for a quick discovery session. And our goal is just to see, hey, look, can we help you? And if we can help you, I'm going to show you what that looks like with a couple of different options, right? And so we can help you with uh, more of the real estate side. We have uh, Viking University. Viking Capital is our company. Viking University, we have a couple of options on, you know, you want to learn how to become a passive investor, an active investor, or you want to become a partner. Uh, complex syndication investor, Wh whatever level you want, we can help you. And then on the personal side, I've been, you know, I, I was on a podcast the other day. Uh, uh, it was a summit, online summit. And, um, you know, I, I gave an interview and then I had like 30 docs like reach out to me like immediately. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so, so I've created sort of something to help people more of on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If they just want success or life or business coaching, uh, we've created that. So just go to mdincome.com and no matter what you want to do, we can help you. I love it. Guys, take Vic up on that. They're, they're just providing massive value. Uh, I've personally loved just being surrounded by Vic and Ravi and they're crushing it and they're, they're great, great for pushing me to, to be my best version of myself. Awesome, Evan. Um, well, Vic, we could, we could probably keep going. We'll, we'll probably need to do another episode. Um, but let's, let's jump into our monumental questions. Yes. What does success mean to you? Success means uh, being the highest and best version of yourself and offering monumental impact. Boom. <laughs> I love it. Um, what about, so we, we already touched a little bit on, but the daily habits, morning rituals, uh, you mentioned Miracle Morning. Yes, uh, Miracle Morning. And then the, the sequel for that book is called The Miracle Equation. Highly, highly, highly recommend both books. Read the Miracle Morning first. Start implementing the the the, the morning routines there, and then uh, level up to uh, the Miracle Equation, and it will change your life. In uh, you know, thirty days seems to be a magic number on this conversation. <laughs> I'm telling you, it doesn't take long to completely change your life. Yeah, it, you can do it days, not decades, guys. I love that. Um, and then finally, the last one, what, what is your favorite book or book you're currently reading? Uh, so uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reading a book and it's called, um, I think it's 21 days to, uh, 21 ways to, uh, I'm going to tell you the exact title. Sorry about that. Here you go. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, if you're not on Audible and you're a busy person, you need to get on Audible because look, that's how you can get. Uh, a ton of information in your brain while you're working out, while you're driving, while you're doing anything. I'm not affiliated with Amazon or Audible, though I wish I was, <laughs> but um, it's, it's a plug. Okay, here it is, guys. The book, the book I want you to uh, consider reading is called The Illusion of Money, and it's by Kyle Cease, C-A-S-E-E. -E. This guy's remarkable. He was a stand-up comedian. You may have seen him. You may have, I think he had a Netflix yeah. show or whatever. And he completely left stand up. I mean, he's still a very funny guy. And you listen yeah. to him in the book. He's really become, it, 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 it's like taking like, I don't know, Jerry Seinfeld, the Dalai Lama, and like, um, I don't know, Tony Robbins and putting them all together. So he's motivational, he's spiritual, and he's hilarious. Yeah. And so, and he's just talking about how, you know, we're trying to chase money and, and, and money is really a, a, a means goal. And we really need to think about changing um, end goals, right? So what does the money represent? Is it represent freedom? Is it represent more time with my family? Is it, does it represent, you know, uh, leaving an impact on, 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 on my local church because I know they're struggling right now? Yeah. What is it that, the, uh, that you're pursuing? And is it really the end goal or is there something else beyond that? So 
uh, I guess this is the last lesson, guys, for, for the monumental listeners here. Stop chasing means goals and start going after your end goals. Your life will change. Yeah, I love that. And we actually got to see him at the Lewis Howes conference last year. Kyle okay. C. Amazing. I, I, haven't, I haven't read that book yet, but now I'm going to move it up to near the top of the list. Move it up, to the, move up on the queue, guys. Move yeah, I love it. Um, well, Vic, in closing, I want to say, first off, thank you so much. Phenomenal episode. We're going to have to do this again. Uh, awesome. And then secondly, how can our monumental listeners reach out to you, follow you, connect with you? Sure. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in real estate, guys, uh, and about our company, Viking Capital is our name of our company, and our website is vikingcapllc.com. If you want to learn more about health and wellness and, and health optimization and get you to live beyond 100 years of age, then it's vinstitute.com, V as in Victor, institute.com. And if you want to get in touch with me directly and, and see if we can work together or if there's anything else I can do to help serve you or any of the monumental listeners out there, mdincome.com, guys. I love it. Guys, take him up on that. Uh, he's just providing massive, massive value. And guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to share it on social media, tag Vikram, tag myself, tag Viking Capital. Let us know you're listening. Let us know what your favorite part of today's episode was and let us know that you're taking these challenges. You're, you're putting into action what Vikram is saying here because it really will change your life in 30 days. Just like he said, he's not kidding. It's for real. It works. Um, and with that guys have a monumental day. Yeah.